I'm Bonnie Francis, and we're here with Heather Guerra and Allison Wood for Compass Regional Hospice. And they're going to come out to the Senior Summit, so I want to talk to Allison first so you can tell us what a senior might see. Um, senior Summit is May 19th. We'll be out at the 4-H Park outside of Centerville. Right. Um, have you been there before? I have. I've been there a couple of years now. And okay. I'm excited to be back this year. Uh, Compass Regional Hospice is proud to be a sponsor of the Senior Summit again. I think this is a great event for the seniors in our community. I really like the themed aspect of it. So right. it's a fun time for everybody that comes out. And it's a time to learn about all the resources that are available in our community. And I'm amazed every year about things that I learn about I didn't even know we had in our community. It's right. So right. many things vendors. change and, and new things become available. Yes. So. And it's a great way to find out about maybe you already knew about a service, but there are new programs and offerings. So right. we're excited to be there. I'll have a couple volunteers there with me. Um, we encourage everybody to come out and, and check out what we have and ask questions about our hospice and grief support programs. Now, you guys made a change, too, this past year with um, expanding as far as the offices, moving out. So that may be something that people may want to know, you know, where are you or what do I do? Like if they want to make a donation or something like that. Right. So our administrative office is now on Course of All Drive in right. the old planning and zoning building. So we've repurposed that space, and, and that is now our hospice um, administrative building. Our hospice house still is at Comet Drive, um, where, it, where it previously was. And then we have our Caroline Hospice House as well in Denton. So we are in several locations now, but still serving the communities of Queen Anne's, Kent, and Caroline counties. Yeah, and just to add to that, Allison, um, people might think, gosh, well, what are they doing with all that space that all the administrative staff was in at 255 Comet Drive? And what we're doing with that as well is repurposing it to be the Hope and Healing Center. What does that mean? The Hope and Healing Center is an actual physical place now, finally, that all of our grief services can be offered to the communities at okay. large. A lot of people don't realize that Compass Regional Hospice provides grief services to anyone within our counties that has experienced a loss. Okay. So it's not just for families who the patient has been through hospice services. It's for any type of loss, suicides, car accidents, unfortunately the opioid overdoses nowadays right. <clears throat> that has become That's... an epidemic in our not only in our county but in our country right. and state. Um, so we are able to help all those people. And we are right now in the process with an architect of repurposing and renovating those spaces to be more soundproof rooms for counseling, right. Right. Um, some kid therapy areas so that children can do play active therapy with counselors. And that's how they will get out their feelings with the counselor as well as doing some alternative therapy work, some energy work, you know, like Reiki and yoga and things of that nature. So we're really excited about the opportunities that we're going to be able to give to the communities as far as grief support and loss. And there's other, I mean, like I know there are people that when they want hospice, they think, oh, they're going to go into the house and they have that reservation and all that kind of thing where people can just stay in their own home that's right and and have hospice come to them mm -hmm. and you know provide comfort and be there for the family right right yeah that's that's a really good point you know we only have six beds in centerville and right. we have three beds in um, caroline county and denton right now we don't have any beds in, in kent county right now but we're looking in the future to be able to do that right so that the residents of each county can stay within their county when they're dying and need to be in a center but with that said, our, our census per day of the patients we're taking care of is about 80 patients to 85 patients. Correct. And if you think yeah. we only have nine beds, the majority of the people that we care for stay in their own home environment. Right. That could be their personal private home, it could be a nursing home, it could be an assisted living group home, whatever the person calls home is right. where we take care of them. Right. And oftentimes, one other thing that I like to um, point out is that people think of hospice, A, as just being for people who have cancer, and it's for anybody that has an in, uh, end of life right. diagnosis, terminal. a terminal diagnosis yeah. of approximately six months or less to live. 
People also um, equate hospice, you know, obviously to a very short period of time. We oftentimes get patients at the very last days of life, and that really it makes it more challenging to gain a trusting relationship with not only the patient but the family as well right. in a very vulnerable time in their lives. So that and and you have to adhere to what that patient wants. That's right. If they don't want the whole family in that room, you do have, I mean, if someone is in your home, mm -hmm. you have the area there by the lobby that mm -hmm. they can gather there mm -hmm. and not have a dozen people in the room when they just want it quiet and, you know, they just want to pass at their own time. Mm -hmm. and That's exactly right. And through our renovations, since we've been in our building now since 2008, we have found out what works well for our patients and families and what is not working so well. Right. And one of the things we have found is that there aren't enough private places for people to get away to or to have personal time or reflection. Right. So we are adding additional um, like family slash living room so that everybody is not in one communal area as well as as um, a, a chapel that is away from everyone, as well as some outside space that's peaceful, kind of like a reflective mm -hmm. garden. Um, so we're really uh, excited about those offerings as well. Now, if someone's interested in volunteering, mm -hmm. who do they contact? They can call our main number at 443-262-4100, or they can go on our website at www.compassregionalhospice.org. Courtney Williams is our volunteer coordinator, mm -hmm. um, and her assistant is Kim. And so either one of those ladies could help, but anyone who answers the phone will point them in the right direction. Okay. We're always in need of volunteers. And a lot of times people think of volunteering for hospice like, I don't want to be with a patient when they're dying. Well, we have so many volunteer opportunities from being with patients to answering our telephones to helping with an event that right. we're having for fundraising. Right. So there is a plethora of volunteer opportunities. Our estate treasurer's resale shop on Kent Island has you know, hundreds of volunteers. That shop is run 100% by volunteers, right. no paid staff. We couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. They truly are the heart of hospice. And in the summertime, you have Camp New Dawn that comes up. So I'm yes. sure there's you know, people that could help out there. Exactly. Thank you. That may, That's a very good point. Um, our camp is for grieving children ages 6 to 18 years old. It's a weekend camp and we also tailor on a family camp to the end of that now which is only we've only had that for a couple years and that's the reason that we do that is because the kids will come to camp and they'll learn some coping mechanisms but when they go to take them back home, the adults haven't learned the same coping mechanisms or yes. what the children have been taught. So bringing the family in for that last day and one night. Connecting peace. That's right. Yeah. And we're finding that that's, that's an incredible um, opportunity for them. But back to the volunteer piece of that, um, camp is run almost all by volunteers as well. Our uh, Rhonda Knotts, who is our grief um, counselor and coordinator of camp, oversees camp and is there the whole time. Courtney Williams, our volunteer coordinator, is also helps to run the camp and is there the whole time. And other members of our staff intermittently for counseling and for other purposes. But the rest of everybody that's there are volunteers. Right. So there's probably 100 volunteers that help that weekend as well. Now, do they have to have training first? They do. Yeah. They do. Um, they go through an extensive training um, with, with Rhonda and Courtney at our office prior to. So that would be something if they're interested in coming out to the camp and helping, mm -hmm. they have to plan to do the training first. That's right. And camp is the first weekend of August. Um, so if they're interested, people should probably get calling now. Right. And those volunteer trainings can be found on the website as well. We keep the calendar on our website of all of our trainings that are upcoming. We run trainings in all three of the counties we serve a okay. couple of times throughout the year. Right. So if people are interested in volunteer opportunities, the website's a great place to check out. If I can add one thing more about the website and contacting us, um, referrals, anyone can make a referral to hospice. That's something that I do hear a lot when I'm out in the community about does a doctor need to make a referral. If you see a neighbor in need or a family member that you think could use hospice services, just give us a call. Like Heather said, our number is 
4100. The website is www.compassregionalhospice.org. And either of those places are a great way to find out more about us, give us a call, and let us come out and talk with you about whether or not hospice would be a good fit for your friend or family member. All right, girls. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank and you. And hopefully they'll stop by the table yes. and get what information they need. Yeah, we'll see you at the summit. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.